Good morning, Crescent Heights. Please join me in worshiping our Lord in song. All who are thirsty. Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we gather for church this morning to worship God, our Creator, our Redeemer, uh, the one who is paying attention to us all the time, the one who desires for us to become all he has created us to be. Uh, If you're new with us this morning, if you're just joining in, we'd invite you to uh, just make a comment. If you're on Facebook or on the website, uh, let us know you're here. There is a pinned comment there that you can fill out a welcome card uh, to let us know of your presence, and it gives me an opportunity to just personally Thank you for joining us as we gather for worship this morning. It is a bit of a rainy day uh, today. It has been a rainy week off and on all week, um, but I, with the rain comes a lot of growth. And so if you guys keep pay attention outside, the other day I was driving and I looked up on Nose Hill and just saw how beautiful and green it was uh, from all the rain that is happening. And I pray that God is working in your life as well, like that rain uh, growing and nurturing you. Um, giving you an opportunity to become all he's created you to be. As we gather for worship this morning, uh, through song, through the reading of his word, uh, through prayer and through the preaching of his word, uh, my hope and my prayer is that you would know God, that you would experience his presence, that the spirit would move within you, guiding you, leading you on uh, in faithful obedience to his will. And so to begin this morning, I would like to read from Ephesians chapter 1 in our call to worship. 
Paul, writing to the church in Ephesus, says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us, ones whom he loves. Let us pray and worship together this morning. God, we gather as your church. We pray that you would unite us, that you would lead us, that you would teach us, that you would remind us that we are yours, for you are our God. And as we gather online again this morning, we pray, Lord, that it would be to your glory, that we would reflect your love, that the comments back and forth would encourage and admonish one another, that everything we give to you today would be for your kingdom's purpose, to make disciples as you've called us to do. Thank you, Jesus, for today, for a chance to gather as the church again and to worship you. Amen. At this time, we're going to turn it over to Andrea, who will lead us in worship through song. Oh, God. 
convictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open Good morning, kids. Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad that you're here to join us. Well, this morning, I need you to go grab um, a few supplies, okay? So, if you have, grab a board or maybe grab a piece of paper or grab Lego if you have Lego at home. Okay, so go grab some supplies. And what I want you to do is either draw or build um, a picture of a house. And this house can be your dream home, what you wish your house would have, or maybe it could be your house that you're currently living in, or just, just a picture of a house, okay? So I'm gonna give you a few minutes and um, go grab your supplies and draw your house. And I'm gonna draw a house on my board here, and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes, okay?
So, this is the house I drew. It's not, I'm not the best artist, but it consists of a few things that I would love to have in a home. So for example, I would love to have a fire pit um, and some beautiful plants, maybe a garden. Um, I'd love to have big windows out front and, and a big tree. These are just some simple things that I would like to have in my house. What are some things that you like in your house? Well, ask your parents to um, share your photo online because we'd love to see what you would like to have in your house. All right, so why did I make, why did I ask you guys to draw or build a house? Well, if I said, let's make a house in real life, would it be as easy as drawing it on a, a board or a piece of paper or building it with Lego? Probably not, right? We might need some help. So for example, if I'm to build this house, I'm gonna need someone to help me build the foundation of the house, right? Uh, maybe they'll have to dig a hole first and then they'd have to build the walls and then I would need a roof and I would need to hire someone to help me build the roof, um, to install the windows, maybe someone to help me paint the house. And then even inside, if I need electricity, I need to hire an electrician and water, I need to hire a plumber. Um, maybe someone to help me with the yard, a landscaper, right? There's a lot of people that comes together to help build a house. See, building a house takes a lot of people with different gifts and talents, doesn't it? Well, it's kind of like the church. In our scripture today, found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 16, Paul talks about um, what it means to have um, spiritual gifts, why God gave us special gifts and talents. So just look at um, the people in your house, your family, um, and then think of all the people in our church, all the church um, members and family members. Each and every one of us have been given special gifts and talents, and God wants us to use these gifts for to do His work, um, to be on mission for God here on earth, right? So stay tuned for Pastor Tyler's sermon today um, on what it means to stay on target. And I will see you guys next week. Good morning, church. Thank you for gathering this morning to pray. Tracy will lead us through Matthew 5, verse 1 through 12. As we pray through the scriptures, please join us in prayer. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, we cry out to you in praise, worship and prayer, knowing you are healer, comforter, savior, and the source of all love. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We think of those who have lost loved ones, those who are suffering with the pain of ill health and injury, for those who have lost possessions, jobs, energy, and joy. May we turn to you for comfort. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Lord, we praise you for those who stubbornly trust you to pull them through. We thank you immensely for the many health workers who put their lives on the line day after day. We, may we put you first in all we do. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. We thank you for the ministries in our city, for those who volunteer and help those in need. We pray specifically for the Calgary Pregnancy Care Center, for its volunteers, clients, and staff. May they flourish in your love. We pray for Hope Mission, for its continued outreach in this time of COVID-19. We praise you for Samaritan's Purse and the disaster relief that is ongoing. We pray for CBM, Canadian Baptist Ministries, and all those serving abroad. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Lord, we confess our sins to you and praise you for the, your ultimate sacrifice on the cross, your life in place for our punishment. May we seek to know you, love you, and follow you in all your ways. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Lord, we thank you for the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada, for the political work done to honour peace within our country and government. 
We thank you for social media and the technology that enables us to proclaim your word and continue to share in fellowship with one another. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because of your death and resurrection, the captives have been set free. Because of your love, we are adopted into your family as one. Help us to extend this love to all people, for every human is created in your image. At this time, we specifically pray for the black community, that equality and fairness would be granted for a community that has been oppressed. We pray for the indigenous within our country, for forgiveness and reconciliation from our wrongdoings. May they have equal access to water, education, housing, and medicine. May we treat all people with dignity. Lord, may we be ambassadors of your love, welcoming people into the kingdom, bringing comfort, sharing the gospel, showing mercy, having integrity, acting peacefully, and standing up for others. May we glorify you in all we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 16. <laughs> but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of stature and the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, of human cunning, by craftness, in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Good morning once again, church. Thank you for participating, engaging, and worshiping together as one body. Uh, here in this place and around the city. Uh, and actually, we actually have someone joining us from uh, down in the States. We've got someone joining us from up in Edmonton. And so just a huge welcome and thank you to everyone who's participating together as the people of God, worshiping our Creator and Savior. This morning's sermon uh, comes from Ephesians chapter 4, as Bless read for us from the West Coast. Um, and it is one of my, Ephesians in and of itself, I've said this a number of times, is one of my favorite uh, letters, books of the Bible. Uh, I love how Paul takes us from who God is and what he's done and then invites us and challenges us and pushes us to think about who we are and what we need to do. And so right in the middle of this, or just over the middle part of the letter, he write, he's writing about the unity, about the body of Christ. He's prayed that great prayer that we heard here in chapter 3, that uh, for the Ephesians he's praying, and the church as a whole he's praying, that they would grasp how far and wide and deep the love of God is. And then he goes into, for 4, 5, and 6, these chapters about what it really means to be the people of God, what it means to be the church. And here in chapter 4, uh, verses six, 7 to 16, he gets quite specific about what it means to be disciples and to be disciple makers. And to be disciple makers who make disciple makers who make disciple makers. And so this is uh, the eighth sermon in our Pluck, Plant, and Produce series. And uh, so it's going to wrap up. This is the conclusion to the series, but definitely not the conclusion to the work that is ahead of us in being the people of God, in being disciple makers. And so the whole premise of the Pluck, Plant, and Produce series and, and what Paul talks about here in, from verse 7 to verse 16 is about what God wants to do in taking us from where we are to where he wants us to be. From where we are as those created in his image to actually realizing and, and developing and becoming uh, the people that he created us to be. Not only individually as, as a person, but as people combined, as the church 
where he wants us to be. And so uh, that's kind of the flow of the message that we're going to go on. And we're going to start right there, the first three verses that Bless read for us. In verses 7 to 10, Paul is letting the church know that, that Christ has given each one the grace. And when he says grace, he, he's not just talking about grace as in forgiveness of sins, but he's talking about the grace, like the gift to engage in the mission. The gift to become who God has created you to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so Paul is reminding the Ephesians or, or me, telling many of them for the first time who are new to the church uh, there as they receive this letter that Christ has given us in his authority and in his power, he's given us the grace, the gift to become who he wants us to be. And so the first thing we need to take away, the first point that we need to understand is that Jesus has given you what he needs you to have right now. Last week, we talked about the mission of God, Matthew uh, chapter 28, and, and Jesus telling his disciples, look, all authority has been given to me to, to give to you, to bless you, to put on your uh, calling to go and make disciples. That's the target that we're aiming for. And that's the premise and the target that Paul was operating in when he was writing to various churches. And here as he's writing to the church in Ephesus, he's saying, look, you need to continue in the mission of making disciples. And remember the promise that Jesus gave his first disciples, I will be with you to the end of the age. Paul is reminding them of that here, that Christ has given his grace, his gifts to you, that Jesus has given you what he needs you to have right now. That wherever you are in your life, that in this moment, Jesus has given you his grace, his gifts, that you might be faithful to carry out his mission right now. Now that doesn't mean, because remember, this is a progress of from where we are to where he wants us to be. So that doesn't mean that he's completed his work in you. Surely not. I hope Christ hasn't completed his work in me because there is a lot of work yet to be done as far as I can tell. But what Jesus is saying, or what Paul is saying about Christ's work is that right now, Jesus has given you gifts. He's given you grace to engage in the mission for where you're at at this very moment. I remember a number of years ago, and for some reason, I don't know why this memory always sticks out. I remember exactly uh, where it happened. We were driving, we lived in a community on the east side of Calgary con called Monterey Park. And we were driving somewhere as a family, my dad and mom and brother and I. And I was, uh, like Nathan, going to be going into high school in the fall. And we were driving, talking about basketball, uh, because I was, I was looking forward to, to playing basketball. I had played basketball since I was young. And now this transition from junior into senior high, I was asking the question, um, I, or I was asking my dad and parents the question, I was pondering on it, would I make the basketball team in grade 10? I knew I was going for a, from a really small school in junior high to a really big school in high school. And so I was, I was nervous and questioning, would I make the basketball team? And my parents, they're very encouraging and yeah, we, we're sure you will and go and try out and all those kinds of things. But there was a sense, there was a question on my mind about whether I was gonna be good enough to make the team, whether I had the skills required to play at a high school level. I had a fear of the unknown about what the future may hold. I had a, a little bit of a sense of inadequacy. And so I was wondering, would that be possible? And so the fall came and first I tried out for volleyball and, and volleyball was for me was always just a placeholder, something to do until basketball season came. And then in the, the later part of the year, and uh, that was 1993, um, basketball tryouts came. And so I went and I, I tried out and was, was fortunate enough, I made the team and played uh, three years in high school, in junior team in grade 10 and the senior team in grade 11 and 12. And it was fantastic, it was a ton of fun. And as grade 12 was ending and basketball season was ending, the question I had was, would I be able to play basketball in university? I had registered to go to university in the fall and that question was on my mind, but the, the conclusion I had already come to was that I wasn't big enough or strong enough or fast enough to play basketball in university. And then another part was I was kind of done playing basketball. I figured university is going to be difficult. I just need to focus on school and do that. So you might be asking, why am I asking the question or ask, give, telling you this story in the context of Jesus having given you what he needs 
to, uh, for you to have right now? Well, here's the thing. When I was in going from grade nine to grade 10, had I not tried out, had I not taken that step of, of faith to try out for basketball, I would have never made the team. Just as when I went into university and didn't try out, didn't even look at trying out, I didn't make the team. But when I took that step in grade 10 and was able to make the team and, and had a great and fun career of basketball through high school, I was able to progress and develop and grow as a basketball player. The same thing is with us in being followers of Christ. Wherever you're at right now, if you don't take that step of faith to follow Jesus, to be obedient to his call, to, uh, to go where he sends you or leads you, to act on the gifts that he has already given you and the talents that he's already entrusted you with, no matter how great or small you think they are, if you don't take that step, there's no way that they can be developed further. If we continue to live in a sense of inadequacy for the mission of God, or a sense of fear of the unknown of what it would be like to, to take that step of faith and to uh, trust Jesus with our lives, if we maybe have too much pride in our life and we're afraid of failing, we will never be able to go from where we are now to where God would have us go. And so we really need to understand as Paul is writing to the Ephesians, you and I need to understand right now that Jesus has given you what he needs you to have right now. And so the, what comes back to us is a question of, am I going to take a step of faith to engage with Jesus in his mission to reach the world, to be a disciple who makes disciples who makes disciples? The second thing that goes on is uh, Paul talks about Jesus's grace has been given to everyone. And then he says uh, that he gave some to be apostles and evangelists and teachers and preachers. And what we need to hear there is that Jesus equips different leaders differently. Not everyone is called to the task of apostleship. Not everyone or church planter is how we might phrase that today. Not everyone is called to be a pastor. Not everyone is called to be an evangelist specifically with the, that set of leadership gifts for that. And so you and I are all created differently. If we compare ourselves to one another, oh, I could never be like that, we're completely missing the point as to what it means to be the church because Jesus equips different leaders differently. I've been really fortunate in my life to have a number of great leaders uh, around me to train under, to learn from, to walk with. Uh, there's Pastor John at, at Goodtree, who many of you know. Uh, there's a friend of mine named Jeff, who currently runs the Boys and Girls Club of Calgary. There's Rob Blackaby out at the seminary, where I was able to take four years of schooling out there, and many, many more beyond that. And all those leaders were de very different than me. Their style, their engagement, their personalities. I mean, there was things that we shared, but they're they were ultimately different people because God had equipped them differently for the tasks that they were involved in. And so as we grow as the church, as we continue to be faithful, as we take those steps of faith with the gifts that Jesus has given us right now, we will develop into the person that Christ desires for us to become. But we have to be faithful with the gifts that he's given us. And we can't say, I'm not going to participate or I'm not going to do the things Jesus has called me to because I'm not as good as so-and-so. I could never be like somebody else. Well, that's the reality. That you're not supposed to be like somebody else. You're supposed to be like who God has created you to be. And you're supposed to grow up into becoming all that Jesus desires for you to become. And that requires a submission to his way and a, a relinquishing of control and a stepping of faith in following Jesus. Being faithful with what you have right now leads to opportunities to continue to grow in Christ. You and I don't have the opportunity or the privilege of being able to say, hey, I'm a leader, follow me, or I'm not a leader. I could never take that role. What you and I need to do is take the opportunities that Christ grants us to do the things he's called us to do. 
And as we grow, he will continue to equip us in his grace. He will continue to equip us with gifts to become all he's created us to be. And that leads us to the third thing that Paul is saying here that I want to, or at least the way that I've broken it down this morning. In verses 12 to 13, Paul says that he's given these leaders, these to apostles, evangelists, etc. He's given them specific, unique gifts as leaders in order to prepare God's people for works of service, to build up the church. And so as people mature and, and move into or become leaders in, in the ways that God calls them to be, leaders' responsibility then is to continue to equip the church, everybody in the church, to equip them for acts of service. And so discipleship, the third thing that I want us to pay attention to, because remember, this is all in the context of discipleship, is that discipleship builds the church upwards, inwards, and outwards. It builds us upwards, as Paul says directly, for works of service. When we act in works of service, we are building up the church. We are creating opportunities to engage with people Uh, in order to invite them to follow Jesus. It builds us inwards, as he continues on, in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. As we take steps in following Jesus, as as leaders equip the church, and as the church grows and new leaders are developed, as we make disciples, we're built inwards in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. And finally, discipleship builds us outwards as he ends that section saying, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That we become the place where God dwells amongst us. That as we grow, as we act in works of service, as we grow in unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, that God's glory may be reflected and shone out through us even more. That we might have the tabernacling presence of God. Jesus has given you what he needs you to have right now. You need to act in faith and step and follow in that grace and gift that he's given you. Jesus equips different leaders differently for the building up of the church. And so not all leaders, not all people are the same, but he has given us and called us to be his people in order that this discipleship, this ongoing process, might build the church upwards, inwards, and outwards. And so we can get into debates, we can get into concerns or arguments about, you know, should we be doing acts of social justice? Should we be preaching the gospel? Should we be studying academically? Should we be practicing spiritual disciplines? And we see people, and I've seen people that try to emphasize one over the other throughout history. But the reality is, is We're all called together as the people of God to engage in acts of justice to or service as Paul uses the word. We are called to engage in the preaching of the gospel, in the study of God's word, and the practice of disciplines that helps foster and develop our relationship with God. Finally, as Paul's concluding this this section, He talks again, this is all in the context, remember, of taking us from where we are and leading us to who God wants us to become. From taking us as infants and leading us to become mature. He talks about that when we're doing all those things, when we are acting in faith on the gifts that he's given us, when we're leaders are taking the responsibilities to become all that God has created them to, to be and then to build up the church and producing more leaders, that we would no longer be infants, he says, tossed by by the winds and the ideas of man. Rather, that we would be developing a steadfastness in in the truth of Christ. And so the final thing, the fourth thing, is that maturity is a steadfast love for Jesus and his church. As God takes you from where you are in the faithfulness, in whatever situation you find yourself, to where he wants you to be, We, you and I individually and as the church will go from being immature infants to mature followers of Jesus. But the maturity is a steadfast love for Jesus and his church. It's not 
intellectual superiority. It's not physical uh, ability. It's not any of those kinds of things. It's a steadfast love for Jesus and his church. And so when we evaluate, do I really love Jesus? We can kind of gauge where our maturity level is at. When we evaluate, do I really love the church? We can evaluate where our maturity level is. And so those moments where we get frustrated in following God or irritated by people that we uh, fellowship with or worship together with in the church, we realize and recognize we have a lot of work to do. That there's stuff that God is still doing in my heart that I need to in my mind in order that I might become mature as he wants me to be mature. And so he takes me and you in that moment, wherever we're at, and says, be faithful with the things I have equipped you with, the grace that I have given you, that I might continue to disciple and mature you, that I might continue to work in and through your life. Christ desires to take us from where we are to where, we, where he wants us to be. And so the target, church, is discipleship. The target is wherever we go, make disciples of all nations. And you and I will never fully complete that task until we are resurrected once again. And so in the meantime, we need to keep our eyes on the target. We need to stay on the target. And we do that by being faithful with where God has us, where Jesus has us right now knowing that he has equipped us for where, given us the gifts he wants us to have for where we are right now, which means we need to act right now. We need, Jesus equips different people, different leaders differently. And so the job is not for you to become like me or me to become like you. It's for each of us to become all that Christ desires for us to become. And that as we do that and as we disciple one another, the church, uh, this discipleship builds the church upwards, inwards, and outwards. And through all of those processes, which is an ongoing cycle of activity and engagement and reflection and love, we would become mature in a steadfast love for Jesus and his church. And so right now in, in our society, in our culture, in our own hearts, we have some phrases that, uh, that show up, some thoughts that show up. And this is where I want us to conclude. Right now, there's a lot of people who feel like they're spiritual, but not religious. They want Jesus, but not the church. They want eternal life, but not the suffering and bearing of the cross right now. There's thoughts of, man, if we only had this person or that person, then our church would be better. If only that person or that person wasn't here anymore, our church would be uh, less annoying to be around. When we keep our eyes focused on the things right in front of us, forgetting that Jesus has died and rose again for the salvation of every one of us, we miss out on the opportunity to become the church that Christ is calling us to become. Wherever you and I are right now, Jesus has equipped us for this moment. Take a step of faith. You and I are different, but we need to grow into who Christ wants each of us to become. And when we do that, this discipleship builds the church upwards inwards and outwards, that we might add to the church, not only numbers of people, but a unity of faith and knowledge in the Son of God, that we might become mature, having a steadfast love for Jesus and his church. And so we can't separate spiritual from religious. We can't separate Jesus from the church. We can't long for people who are more equipped than us and wish that those who are less equipped or irritating would go away. We have to act as the church right now. And we do that by keeping our eyes on the target of discipleship. That's my job and that's your job together. That we might be built together, no longer tossed by the wayward or or fickle ideas of man that would distract us, 
but that we would follow Jesus wherever we go, making disciples, that we might become mature in our faith, that we might become mature with a steadfast love for Jesus and his church. And so, church, let's keep our eyes on the target. Let's stay on target. Let's not be distracted by who we wish we were or who we wish wasn't around. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus, loving him with everything we have, and loving our neighbor as ourself. Pray together with me. Lord God, we gather before you, confessing that often we are distracted by the things of this life. We wish we were someone else. We wish that someone else was in our life. We wish that people that are in our life maybe weren't there to deal with. But you have called us, Jesus, to follow you, to be faithful with the gifts that you have given us right now, to trust that you are equipping us to become who you've created us to be. You've called us to engage in discipleship, growing in unity of faith and knowledge of yourself. And so we pray, Lord, that you would help us keep our eyes on the target, that we would confess our sin daily, that we would grow to maturity. We trust you, Lord. We love you. Guide us as we continue to seek you in making disciples. Amen. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Andrea once again for Worship Through Song.
Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Bless, Ange, and Tracy, uh, everyone involved in leading us through worship this after or this morning. Um, just a few announcements before we wrap up. Um, Thursdays from three till eight o'clock, we are doing tent meetings at the church. And so, if you go to the website, you can kind of see the setup. Uh, hopefully, the weather improves. Uh, but even if it, the weather is bad, we'll move it inside. But this is an opportunity to just gather, and so you can gather as a small group. Uh, and come and I'm going to be there from three till eight. Please sign up through the website or call the church office so that Ange can sign you up directly. Um, but ideally just go through the website. There's a form there that's created and that way we're just making sure we're keeping our numbers uh, to proper protocol. If you're looking at signing up privately and just having maybe as a family and me or one on one with me uh, to for visitation, uh, you can there's an option to click a private um, meeting and so uh, yeah we just encourage you it's a chance to have fun we had a few people there's four people that came by last Thursday and uh, so we'll do this throughout the summer an opportunity to sit in the garden and enjoy it uh, but sit together as people and just enjoy each other's company and pray together and, and whatnot um, we are that being said uh, as a family we're gonna be taking a couple weeks holidays in July so those two weeks um, I, we won't be there for the tent meeting um, and so that will be off the calendar but uh, but that when we are here it will be on and so I will have more firm dates for everybody this week as to when our holidays will be and during our holidays what the leadership has decided is we're gonna make the good tree service available so on Sunday morning instead of trying to figure out a service um, with us we're gonna create a, a way to connect with good tree so you will be able to join their service at 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoons um, those are all the announcements we have for this morning. Uh, just a reminder, if you're able to contribute or desire, feel led to contribute to the, financially to the ministry at Crescent Heights, go to the website, crescentheightsbaptist.com, and there are a number of different ways that you can uh, contribute to the ministry here. We thank you to everyone who continues to give faithfully. Uh, we are, as a church, have been very fortunate of the continued support, and so our staff is full, and, and we're continuing to do everything we can to reach out and minister and be the church together. That is everything for this morning. Let us close with the benediction. May the love of the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, reminding you who you are and who you've called to be, proclaiming that the kingdom has come and that the King's name is Jesus. As you go forth in your life this afternoon and throughout this week, may you make disciples who make disciples. Amen. Go in peace.